Hi plant friends, Maria from Bloom and Grow Radio and I'm here with Josh, Hi the there. air plant man. If you remember from our episode on Air Plant 101. Welcome to the studio. Come Yay! on in. <laughs> And grow YouTube show. All right, so Josh, what are we standing in this magical, mystical world of air plants? You're behind the scenes at uh, Air Plant Man Studio. This is our design, nursery, packing, uh, everything place. Where all the magic happens. This is where all the magic <laughs> happens, and uh, no, it's great to have you here. We'll show you a lot of really cool things. This is also Elliot, the studio dog. The studio dog Elliot, is so cute. Do something cute. Hi, Elliot. Do something cute for our listeners, watchers. He, uh, <laughs> he keeps an eye on all the air plants. <laughs> Um, but yeah, excited to show you uh, everything we do back here. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm so drawn to this gorgeous blooming wall that you have going on. This is one of the Air Plant Man frames, right? Yes. So these are the uh, the frames that we make here in Los Angeles, and they're totally waterproof and really lightweight, so they're really easy to display your air plants. And this was a crazy giant display we were putting together for a client, and so we get to place them on the wall, see what we think, move things around a little bit, but. We have these gorgeous uh, blooms right now happening. And many people don't realize Tillandsia bloom, but there are all sorts of gorgeous different flowers and different colors. This one is uh, has a magenta inflorescence, and then the individual flowers that come out one by one over several weeks um, are blue on this one. But So another thing about the blooms, when an yes. air plant blooms, mm -hmm. I think we talked about this in our interview, that technically is the end of that air plant's life. Right? Um, yes, with most of them, the mother plant uh, that's flowering will eventually um, pass on, but they send out a lot of different pups, and so the next generation starts growing up from the bottom, and um, you'll eventually end up with more air plants than you started with. Because when one blooms, it could grow like four or five pups, right? Correct, and we'll show you some cool examples of that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit more about pups and what they look like. Yeah, this is kind of a fun example. So you can see the spent. Uh, bloom spike here, so he's all done. So this is dead. All done flowering, okay. and if you wanted to, you could trim it right at the base, kind of right where it kind of connects to the plant there. Okay. This mother plant will continue to grow for a long time, mm -hmm. but um, eventually it'll go down. But you can see the next generation. Jump, all the little babies jumping coming up out all around, and once they get to about a third of the size of the mother plant, you can just separate them right where they connect, and mm -hmm. they can grow as their own plants. Or they can form giant clumps, kind of like this over here. Let's see, this is another good example. Oh my gosh. These were the old flowers, and then there's the next generation coming out. This is like the whole life cycle, because you have the dead blooms, you have yep. some... Oh no, those these are, are from the, neighbor, the tree. The neighbor's camellias. <laughs> I got so excited. Yeah. But you have the dead blooms, and uh -huh. then all of these... And the pups just, they'll just keep growing exactly. on top of each other. And so you so can, this will just keep getting bigger and bigger. You can end up with, I've seen kind of uh, almost human sized clumps of these air plants hanging. Oh my God. That are 40, 50 years old. And what's this guy? Yeah, this is a really beautiful, um, I believe it's a latifolia, and it's a, one of our larger specimens. Okay. And it's kind of a series of individual plants that we've kind of put this together. You see some dead ones too. This is just the dead uh, old leaves and that's another okay. thing I can show you is once your plant gets, you know, the growing tip is right in the, the center there mm -hmm. and as time passes the leaves at the bottom will sort of die naturally. And like you, with our Pilea peperomioides, our favorite other, it, one of our other favorite plants. Exactly, yeah. it's nothing to be alarmed about. You can either leave it as I have here or you can just sort of just pull these off. Oh, okay. So this must be an old plant. This is a pretty, lot of dead. It is pretty old, but I always tell people we get a lot of questions about how often do you have to prune your tillandsia. Uh -huh. And the answer is not very often. When you grow on the dust in the air, right. they grow quite slowly. Okay. So um, you know, a specimen like this is quite, quite old. So yeah, you can see all the different growing tips and this guy's starting to send out a little yeah, spike as well. Yeah, look at that. Um, and so this is one of our prized specimens. All right, so explain to me what this contraption is <laughs> and what all of these amazing plants on top of them are. So this is our way of storing the thousands of plants that are always coming in and going. Yeah. And so we've uh, just devised a rack system. It's not the greatest long-term way to, to grow them, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to say they're a little too close together, okay. a bit too shaded, but it's fine for our, our uh 
our needs. And so we have all these wood racks. Ooh, okay, and then they and can come these out. these come out. <gasps> and so we always try to organize them by species a little bit, but they okay. get mixed up. Okay. And this is sort of the paint for our, you know, living paintings that we create. And I love these guys. Yeah. They're this, like grass almost. This is Talanzia, um Juncia Red Green. Okay. And it has this really cool reddish reddish grassy texture. Oh, that's awesome. And one of the reasons I love designing with them is there's just so many colors, shapes, sizes, leaf mm -hmm. types. All right, so what's this one? The sexy one that we all lo love and know the, so much about. The king of the air plants, <laughs> Silanzia xerographica. And right. so this one is gorgeous, just uh, very popular and um, a centerpiece all on its own, real mm -hmm. striking one. All right, so we're sitting at this table full of air plants. I feel like with our Air Plant 101, I now understand Air Plants 101, the genus Talanzia, but I want I would love for you to kind of break down this is like a wild world of air plants. There's such differentiation within totally. the genus. So can you kind of walk us through how all of these guys are related, even though they look so different? Absolutely, and that's one of the things I really love about uh, Talanzia is in this single uh, genus you have over six hundred different species. Not only that, but they look like they're all from different alien planets. Yeah, like how are these two yeah. family members? Well, I don't get it. I think they're, you know, they're one of the newer plant families to evolve, mm -hmm. and they kind of grow in very different climates, mm -hmm. and so that naturally makes them take on very different shapes and forms. Yeah. And, uh, so what's this one, your favorite? This is one of my favorites. I mm -hmm. don't know if I'm gonna give them the title of the favorite, oh, okay. but uh, this is Talanzia. Tectorum, Tectorum, and it's got these wonderful fuzzy trichomes. So fuzzy! And that is because it grows in a very dry environment with very harsh sunlight, and so that allows it to conserve water and protect itself in between um, waterings. So are these maybe more drought tolerant than some of the other ones because Cor of their fuzzies? Correct, okay. and yeah, although all Talanzia have some general care mm -hmm. requirements you can follow, if you see really silvery gray fuzzy leaves like mm. this, it probably means it's a little more drought tolerant. Okay. And then kind of the wider green leaves like this one means it's gonna take a little less sun and a little more water. Okay. But. Um, but yeah, there's general general rules of thumb you can that follow. That will go over in a bit. Yeah. What about this one? This one I have several of mm -hmm. with this pretty bloom. I feel like these are readily available in a lot of garden centers. Yeah, this is uh, an Aranthos cross. There's a many, they also hybridize quite easily. Okay. And so you get lots of variations even within a, a specific species. Mm -hmm. And so I believe this is an Aranthos purple star maybe. Um, don't hold me to that, okay. but you can see the slight purplish tinge to the foliage. Yeah. And then it sends out this gorgeous um, bloom spike. Ugh. And then these flowers will emerge one by one over a series of days, kind of extending the pollination period. Um, but each bloom only lasts a few days. So okay. um, it's a little short lived, but then there's more coming. I love that. And now we've got these two, which look like they're, they're friends. Yes, it they're is. They're siblings. They're the two crazy arm varieties, yes. the, the waving arms. And this one is uh, Talanzia bulbosa, like mm -hmm. a bulb, which is aptly named. Right, there and, we go. Um, it, it's remarkable for having some of the least fuzzy leaves of any okay. Talanzia. It's got very kind of smooth leaves and um, just has these crazy waving arms. This one is red now, um, and they- Is talent, it blushing? It is blushing. Okay, there talk you go. to me about blushing. Yeah, blushing is a really cool thing that Talanzia do where, because it's not a very big plant, rather than just have the flower be the, you know, attractive part of it mm -hmm. for pollinators, the entire plant will change color. And so wow. this bulbosa uh, was turning red as it came into bloom, and then will revert back to green once it's done. So does it blush right before it blooms? Like yes. kind of as a, so if my air plant starts to blush, I can expect a bloom coming soon. It's, it's hopefully, hopefully. Uh, but yes, that it, it is a sign that it's, it's headed towards flowering. Okay. And the best way to get that is bright light. Bright light. The sunlight is a, a great way to ensure that you get the color that comes from mm -hmm. blooming and, and just naturally it'll sort of color up more with more sun. Okay, and now we've got this guy. Now, are these guys the same? species are what the, how latin do they how close do they get same genus different uh -huh. species same genus and so what's the genus of these two they're the genus of everything here is talansia this is all talansia but they're different species even Correct. though they look so similar and so it's this guy this has got one of the best latin names it's 
Caput Medusae. I remember on our podcast right. we talked about this guy. And that means head of snakes. Right. And you can see why, very aptly named. And um, it's a little more fuzzy than the bulbosa. Mm -hmm. Can grow in a little more shade or quite, quite striking sun. Uh, when I visited uh, these guys in Habitat, they were growing on cacti um, right alongside. Ooh. And they have these waving arms that kind of give you that head of snakes feeling and um, yeah, super... you can see see a little bit of fuzz. Mm -hmm. The neat thing about this one is when you water it, the arms get real straight, and as it dries out, the arms get more curly. And so I didn't know that, that's the, so interesting. One of the easiest ones to tell when it's time for a water. Cool. And yeah, you can actually see on this guy, the roots that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And so these are the roots that are used for grabbing on. So okay. when this guy finds a place he's happy, these roots will sort of take hold. Um, but they don't do any moisture or nutrient absorption. That's all right through that leaf surface. So the roots are purely for holding on to those trees. They're purely for gripping. Although I've, I've been seeing some interesting experiments with people thinking maybe something gets absorbed right. through there, but the traditional scientific knowledge is it's just for gripping. And so I'll often prune these kind of mm -hmm. right here if just for aesthetics or, right. or you can leave them. Leave them. Um, and if you do see more of these growing, it's a sign your plant's happy and wants to stay where it is. So it's a Very good, cool. It's a good sign. That's a good indication. Them. Yeah. Now, what about this little bushy guy? Yeah, this is a Festucoides clump, and this one is really grassy. I love the ombre look. The ombre the pink to green. The yeah. ombre look is very, again, uh, a factor of this blushing. So these guys mm -hmm. are, are getting on some color, but typically they would just be the green. But okay. lots of sunlight and the right time of year brings out some color. And yeah, these guys are really gorgeous. And this is actually a clump made up of many individual specimens. And so pups. you could, uh, the pups, yeah. So you could break this into five or six different plants or just, and you leave can it just as a single clump. Separate them, yeah. right? Should we, should we do one? Are you ready? <gasps> I'd love to do one, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look for one where we'll get a nice clean break. Okay. Um, so you would just follow the plant right where it connects to the main the mm -hmm. main uh, clump, kind of hold it firmly and just kind of peel back. And so you're trying to bring as much of that base with you right. as you can. And, and there, there we go. go. So you can see this is his own little little plant. Oh my gosh. And you can see some of the tiny pups just starting to grow from Look the Look at those tiny little pups. That's wild. And so there you go. You've got a whole new plant. There you go. We know, <laughs> we know how to separate now. That's awesome. But yeah, you know, just with this one, you can see there's just something about the leaves and the fact that it yes. floats in air that's just so... It's whimsical. Whimsical, yeah. It's very whimsical. It's uh, a little... You hear living sculpture a lot, but these yeah. guys really do a good job. And last but not least, I also have a lot of these. I feel like yes. these are really re readily available. Probably the most common in cultivation, yeah. Tillandsia. And this I is, feel like they're like the pom-pom of the Tillandsia world. They are, they are. And this is called Ionantha. Ionantha, right. And again, there's a bunch of cultivars within it. Mm -hmm. um, this is... Um, uh, one from Guatemala, and it's really blushing up nicely. So mm -hmm. these guys are typically more of a green color, but this whole plant has turned red in preparation of blooming. Yeah, man, look at that. Oh. And um, these guys are pretty drought tolerant, but because they're so small, they there's less reserves to draw upon, so they do need to mm -hmm. be uh, regularly watered. And um, one last little guy I wanted to share that's really cute. Yeah. Is this so is cute. probably my favorite Latin name of any of them? Um, neglecta. Neglecta. <laughs> so, so this is Tolanzia neglecta. And Leave can, me the hell alone. Is that what it means? Well, it does need care. I don't want to, um, you know, say that, but um, it is quite tough. And I just thought it was funny that someone called it a, a you know, a neglect. Yeah. And um, this one is just a small series of pups. They can get quite large, and so you can see all the individual. Yeah, they're tiny. Tiny, tiny little plants in there. And this so do the plants stay small, but the pups continue to grow, or the um, plants get the, bigger This will too? all get oh, bigger, okay. and yeah, I can show you some larger clumps, but they uh, have a gorgeous, gorgeous, vivid blue bloom that's quite striking. Very cool. Um, but yeah, that's another one of our favorites, and so these are just a couple of our... Just a couple of the wide world. Just a couple of the species kicking around, yeah. Of Tillandsia. Yes. It's... Okay, so on our podcast episode, you gave us so much information about caring for air plants. I would love a rapid fire air plant care 101. How do we care for all these beautiful babies? You got it. And uh, always my favorite thing to share because mm -hmm. we want people to have happy living, Not kill them. Happy yeah. living air plants. <laughs> exactly. So light, water, and air is yeah. what we'll cover. So light, mm -hmm. bright filtered light. So okay. don't, if you have a dark corner, where do the that. sun never shines, yeah. <laughs> it's um, 
it needs sun. And they need so, sun, even though you might think, oh, they don't need soil, they're like not a real plant. Like they still need some sun. I, not only do they need sun, but if uh, you know, your, your ficus in the dark corner of your house that's doing okay, these mm -hmm. guys won't be thrilled. So we say within six feet of a window. Okay. You don't need direct sun though. So don't feel like it has to be blasting all day, although many of them would like that and be fine, but somewhere near a window that gets some sunlight. Okay. And um, so that's important. So that's your sunlight. Watering, which is probably the most important and the probably most often done incorrectly. Mm -hmm. um, if you're outside in a garden by the ocean and the temperature is mild, you can spray them with the hose once every few weeks and they're fine. Okay. If you're inside and you've got the heating and the air conditioning yeah. running and all the rest of it, it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. And so we're so happy to hear that you've been getting good feedback from our tip. Yeah. A multi-hour soak. And a Not just like a 30 minute no. soak. That was the biggest takeaway that yep. listeners had written in about yep. our episode. There's yep. a lot of, we can just spritz it with a water bottle or put it underwater for a minute. Not enough. Okay. Um, several hours of submerging the whole plant in a clean uh, bowl of water. Don't have any soap residue or anything in mm -hmm. there. And um, water quality wise, I just use tap water now, but um, if you have filtered water, that's great. If you have filtered water and you want to be bougie. And you want to be bougie. I decided that plants shouldn't get nicer water than I did so that we all drink tap water now. Me but, too. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, and so that's the really important thing. I recommend for a multi-hour soak up to about 12 hours. Okay. One tip is though, if you have a great bloom like this, only soak it up to about here. You right. want the bloom sticking out of the water that can cause it to, to kind of rot and fall apart. Once you're done watering, it should dry out completely within four hours. And so for, especially with ones like this Zero Graphica, you would shake it upside down. Oh, yeah. look at that. Look at that. It had a little water in it. Um, I do a real good, I really get that you water. Do, you're really into mm. that? I'm, uh, I'm a little uh, more lax with the ones You're outside. Because <laughs> I've had several yeah. rot on me that way. So yeah. I really try to make, because if you flip it upside down, then yeah. all the water collects in there and then it's easy to for the plant to rot. It's, right? um, yeah, and it's especially <laughs> varieties like the Zero Graphica, you have to watch this. Yeah, you can really get in there. Some of them don't don't really hold that much water, but yeah. these, the, the, they call them vase-shaped mm -hmm. ones, can really be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just uh, put it somewhere with some good air circulation, give it a good shake first, and you should see the plant turn from an intense vivid color, which I'll show you in a sec, mm -hmm. to this more gray tone that you're used to when, this, when the trichomes have dried out. And then finally, air. Right. Um, they can survive indoors with no fresh air for a very long time. They would love some fresh air. So yeah. when the weather warms up or as, a, as possible, if you could crack a window and give them that, that fresh air running over their leaves really helps them be happy. So. Or what about air circulation? Like, because some people have like kind of stagnant apartments. Not great. Yeah. Um, probably not blasting it with the fan all the time, but some sort of air movement is going to definitely make them much happier. If you can have it at least close to a window. Close to a window. Where fresh air is coming in. And you know, they're so light and easy to move around. Rotation is a great way to mm -hmm. do it. So if you have a spot that has good air, but you want to look at it in a spot that doesn't, you can sort of move it back and forth and yeah. that'll, that'll sort of help um, a little bit. And then try and display it in a way that it gets more air. So people will often put them in glass balls or other sort of restricting air circulation right. displays Whether inside their apartment. You're just layering the challenges for, for a happy, happy air plant. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like suffocating it. I, uh, oh no. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so what about a couple other questions sure. that came up for me when I was developing my air plant collection? Yeah. Um, Pro tip to yes. not submerge the bloom in water. Yes. After the bloom has died, yep. you can snip it off Correct. at the bottom or you can just leave it Correct. to kind of ultimately fall off. Yeah, I don't think they'll fall off. They'll It'll take just a stay. while. Yeah, maybe many years later. Okay. But, um, yeah, Do you advise snipping the bloom off? Purely an aesthetic decision. Okay. I don't think it dramatically affects the plant health. Um, one kind of interesting thing is um, if your plant has been pollinated or sometimes not, I actually don't know, but mm -hmm. it will form a seed uh, seeds that okay. uh, are just like dandelion. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tufted stuff and that'll float in the wind and wherever it lands, more air plants will grow. Cool. And the air plants are so tiny when they start. It's really amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole level of challenging. That's 201, growing. air yeah. plant 201. But just, just so you know. <laughs> and then, but yeah, we, what you would do is if this guy was done blooming, I'd sort of pull him to the side and find right where that stem is sort of mm -hmm. meeting the plant itself. And if you snip it, it'll 
look more attractive as sort of the pups grow from the base and it keeps keeps growing. And with the pups, you can soak the pups in water. The pups are just Okay, fine. so then, treat yeah. the pups like you treat an air plant. Yeah, it's just these flowers and that bloom spike you want to make sure stays dry. But the, the rest of the whole plant, entire leaf surface is what's soaking up the water and nutrients. So cool. um, not just the base. That's another watering mistake people make. They'll kind of put it Oh, in, like just pop just it in. Just to there. No, because the leaves is are where this they're is the absorbing roots. the water. This is what you would think of normally as the roots. Well, this is just just um, the bottom of the plant. Yeah. Um, and so yes, if, if your listeners uh, and viewers follow those simple tips, I guarantee a higher level of success. <laughs> yes. Can we cheers with air plants? Yes. <laughs> Cheer, <you're right>. Here <laughs> we go. Cheers so, to proper air plant care. <laughs> to happy air plants. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Josh, thank you so much for giving us all of this information. My pleasure. If we want to learn more about air plants or maybe purchase one of your really awesome air plant holders, where can we find you? Airplant Man. Airplantman.com. Airplant Man. Uh, Instagram, uh, the internet, we've got lots of great information, back info, care tips, mm -hmm. and then we have a California made product line that is in our opinion, the highest way to the display these, uh, making it easy to care and showing how beautiful the plants are. So great having you here today. Really enjoy chatting. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Definitely visit airplantman.com and check out all the cool things he makes because they're so cool. Hey, plant friends. If you like this video, make sure that you subscribe below. Also, check out my podcast, Bloom and Grow Radio, with houseplant care tips and really interesting interviews with plant people all over the world. And follow me on Instagram. All of the links are in the show description below. Keep blooming and keep growing. Doom do 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 do